Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. RichardDwyer.com for my law firm site. Today is Sunday, June the 12th, 2020. Let's talk about some speculations I like. For legal reasons, please don't consider this to be financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I'm looking at. Some of these moves I've made already, some I plan to in the coming days. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, I know there are some very successful people, let me underline the word very, who believe that we're in a stock melt-up that's going to continue. That, in fact, nothing fundamentally is wrong with the economy, and we're in the middle of a V-shaped recovery. One of those people is legendary investor Bill Miller, who recently appeared with Consuelo Mack on her show, Wealth Track. I'm mentioning the show so people can look at it. It's up on YouTube discussing his views on the economy. Understand, unlike Warren Buffett, Bill Miller is holding on to some airline stocks, right? This is a guy who set the record for a number of consecutive years, beating the S&P 500. Very successful guy. That's not my take on the economy, right? I don't have Bill Miller's credentials. I'm not here pretending to have Bill Miller's credentials. But I don't see a V-shaped recovery. I think the stock market, even if it is a melt-up, is going to come back down to earth. I don't see the profits to justify the valuations. <clears throat> so, we have to get a little bit off-road. I think the public narrative in several areas is off big time. I think the legislative framework, the legal rules we have, even the political discussion we're having is off point, right? So <clears throat> let's talk about some speculations. These are plays that I think could blow up big. Right? A speculation is a little bit different than an investment where you think, okay, I'm going to get a reasonable rate of return that might beat the S&P 500. With a speculation, you're thinking, look, if this breaks the right way, we're looking at 2x, 5x, 10x. So... Let me just say this. I know there are those who doubt crypto. I know there are those who doubt Bitcoin. First, let's stop kidding ourselves. I don't care what the stock market is doing. You need to go for sound money. Right? You need to go for things that the government can't print. That the central bank can't just influence the price of. You need to go for things that have real prices. Not anything in the bond market where they're fooling around with the yield curve. Right? No, 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 no. We don't want artificially manipulated anything. We're looking for real markets. We're looking for real products. We're looking for fungibility. We're looking for sound money investments. So... I know Bitcoin has floundered of late. I know it's currently below $9,300 as I make this video. I know I've talked about Bitcoin ad nauseum in earlier videos. In my opinion, the best bet on the board, the one I believe in, the one I've owned for years, <clears throat> is Bitcoin. Right? Simply because the hash rate is such that hackers really can't touch it. It's the granddaddy of all cryptos. So even though I'll concede, there are some cryptos out there with more capability, right? People know I'm into Dash, for example. But 
Even Dash people understand that Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all, right? Dash can't match Bitcoin's hash rate. Bitcoin has a name recognition that none of the other coins can match. Many people associate the entire cryptocurrency space with Bitcoin, right? To me, Bitcoin absolutely is a must own right for me I'd sell a lot of things I'm hodling my Bitcoin let me also say too that in the precious metals space silver is a must own understand I believe in gold but even gold bugs understand that in volatile situations like this historically, silver has outperformed gold. Right? Understand too, gold should not be priced as expensively as it is versus silver. In the 19th century, the ratio was around 15 to 1. Now it's several times north of that. So, in the silver space, and during normal times, I would be loading up on silver coins, right? Silver eagles, as they're called, from the U.S. Mint. But now, they're scarce, and for good reason. The scarcity should tell you that the price is about to explode, right? I don't want to pay a premium on physical silver. I know better. I can get a silver miner. I've owned First Majestic for years. The symbol is AG. Right? Let me just say, too, that you have trusts out there, silver trusts, owned by reputable companies who physically have the silver. <clears throat> We're not fooling around with paper or anything. Right? Physically have the silver, like Sprott. Physical Silver Trust. I like them. Let me just say, too, that understand, miners will multiply in price much higher than the physical metal should things take off. In other words, the physical metal will go up handsomely. Don't get me wrong. That's the safe play. You have the physical metal. It's appreciating in value. So you have the appreciation in your hands. But that can't match the appreciation you would get from a good silver miner. It just can't. So you have some silver ETFs out there that interest me. Global X Silver Miners ETF, for example, Right? That interests me because if, in fact, in my mind, it's a when, silver takes off, I think the silver miners, First Majestic, for example, are going to explode big time. Let me say, too, I've mentioned the GDX, a gold miners ETF, in past videos. Right? I know gold is doing well of late. Right, it's flirting with 1800. It's past 1800, but has retreated a little bit as I make this video. Now is a great time to buy gold. I know gold's been on a run, trust me. If you're a gold bug, and I mean a great time for me, right? I'm not giving advice in this video, I'm just telling you how I'm thinking, right? This is just the top of the first inning for gold. As good as it's been this year, and it's been great, this is the top of the first inning. If you believe, like I do, that the government, excuse me, in fact, let's take the government out of this, that the dollar is at great risk of losing value. That most cryptocurrency around the, excuse me, we'll just look at it 
through the lens of fiat currency. Then most fiat currency around the globe is at risk of devaluation. That debt levels in places like China, economic powerhouse countries like China, matter. And that both China and the United States are too indebted, as is Japan, another economic powerhouse. Right? If you believe in all that, then understand, I believe gold's going to more than double. I believe the gold miners, GDX, GDXJ, uh, I'm not going to take too much of a risk with individual gold miners, although I own some of those, right? I prefer royalty companies, Metalla, things like that, to individual gold miners. But let's just say the GDX and the GDXJ, the junior miners, ETF for gold, right? I'm expecting those to more than double. As I said, these are speculations. I don't want to track the S&P 500. I don't want a reasonable rate of return of 5 to 10%, right? I'm going deep. I'm trying to hit home runs here. That's why I like the GDX and GDXJ here, right? On, pay attention to the date. July the 12th. Let me also say too that we shouldn't overlook other precious metals, limited supply metals. Copper is essential. There's more than 100 pounds of copper in every Tesla. Did people know that? When emerging markets start to develop and stuff like that, they demand copious amounts of copper. If you believe China bounces back big and excels going forward, and I believe that's the long-term trend, right? China and India, I have my eye on India too, then they're going to demand a lot of copper. So a company like Freeport MacMoran, the symbol is FCX, is something I'm looking at closely. They're involved in a lot of copper mining. The stock has had volatility, but is at a price level about where it was a year ago. How's that possible, given the scarcity of copper? Right? Let's shift gears. You know, well-meaning regulations really do hinder innovation. They really do. Private companies owned by one or two people or one or two groups can take risks that they simply can't take if they're public companies, right? There's a whole part of the bar out there, the lawyers groups, that's prepared to file class action lawsuits against any company that takes risks and has it blow up in their faces. Right, so publicly traded companies have to tread softly. They can't be too aggressive or they might find themselves in some deposition. Having to explain why they took a risk to get greater profits and had the market turn on them. So I keep an eye on private companies because private companies don't have that much of a problem. The few investors they have understand that going for great profits often implies taking on added risks. So it's private companies that will break a lot of new innovations, a lot of new technologies. It's private companies that'll disrupt the status quo with groundbreaking products. Now, I'm a big fan of a public company, Square, big fan of Jack Dorsey's. People here online have heard me talk about Square Cash App, right? I own Square Stock. I use Square Cash App. I own Bitcoin on Square Cash App. I own shares of many of the things I've discussed here on Square Cash App. 
right? GDX, uh, GDXJ. You can buy fractional shares. We'll, we'll pretend that they're not all fractions, uh, fractional ownership, right? You can buy fractional shares on Square. I find it to be an amazing product. But a private company, Uphold, right now is ahead of them on some technology. So with Uphold, I have an Uphold car. And just to understand how far ahead of fiat currency, cryptocurrency is right now. I want people to understand how far ahead of Zelle and Venmo that cryptocurrency is right now. With my Uphold card, without converting to dollars, right, without converting to dollars, on Uphold I have a little crypto portfolio. I know Trace Mayer, who I admire greatly, says, if you don't own the keys, you don't own the cryptocurrency. That's great advice. But I'll take my chances for liquidity purposes so I can use a Visa or MasterCard and do a regular credit card transaction in a world where very few people are prepared to allow you to do cryptocurrency transactions. They don't want to deal with the exchange rates and figuring that out. They have regular cash registers. They don't have digital wallets. Okay, fine. So an Uphold, I have a few cryptocurrency. Uphold allows you to hold different types of cryptocurrency. So what Uphold allows you to do is on the app, you can say, you know what? I'm going to spend some Bitcoin cash today. And you can link your credit card to Bitcoin Cash, right, to your Bitcoin Cash holdings. So you can see about how much is backing your credit card, right? If you have $50 worth of Bitcoin Cash and you link your Uphold card to your Bitcoin Cash holdings, you have $50 worth of spending ability on your card, right? Think about it. So you know the rest. I believe in Bitcoin Cash, uh, not as much as Bitcoin, but I believe in Bitcoin Cash. Um, Bitcoin Cash doesn't have the hash rate Bitcoin has. We'll save that for another video. But I had a little extra Bitcoin Cash. I said, let me link it to my Uphold card. Then I went out to a vendor. I bought some coffee. And you know the rest. The transaction processed just like any other credit card transaction. The reason it's important is if the dollar starts losing value, and if you don't want to fool around with conversions to fiat currency, if you don't want to sell Bitcoin to get dollars to back your Square Cash App card, if instead you want to just go directly from Bitcoin Cash, uh, ZRX, uh, Dash, to your credit card. So you can buy that cup of coffee. You can do that right now on Uphold's platform. Right? You can sign up for Uphold card. And I'm in the United States, folks. I know we are silly enough to have a lot of restrictions on cryptocurrency that they don't have elsewhere. But understand, I can use, I have used, the Uphold card in the United States. Right? And I've converted crypto into coffee and stuff like that quickly. Right? At merchants that accept MasterCard. The technology isn't coming, folks. It's here today from Uphold, right? So let me just say, a lot of what people have heard is simply inaccurate. 
I speak with our teenagers here, and you know the rest. I'm hearing stuff about, you know, Bitcoin being hackable. In what world is that with this hash rate? I'm hearing about merchants not accepting Bitcoin Cash. How's that possible when you have the Uphold app? Understand the narratives are false. I expect Square to get to where Uphold is. On Uphold's technology. So let me just say, all of these cryptos that you supposedly are hearing are failing who happen to be in the top 10 in market cap, like Bitcoin Cash, don't believe the narratives. The usability of Bitcoin Cash has never been higher. Understand, we're in a world where already people are using Apple Pay and GPay. They're putting their cards in their phones. This is leading up to a realization that government-issued fiat currency not only can't match the ability to retain value that limited supply crypto has, but they can't even match crypto technologically. Understand, my uphold card in a fiat world would be the equivalent of me having Juan and boulevards and dollars and being able for a transaction to pick the currency and link it to my card. Right? That technology already exists in crypto. And of course, as savvy merchants figure stuff out, as savvy consumers figure stuff out, then we'll be able to do away with the physical cards altogether as they've done already with Google Pay. Right, with Apple Pay. We'll be able to do away with the cards and just have customers pull up to the window and decide, okay, which currency am I gonna use today? and then link that currency to their card. Finally, let me just say this. Um, let's talk about your Amazon Echo, your Amazon Alexis. I have to whisper it because I have an Alexis in the background here. Um, You may have had friends over recently. You may have had Amazon Music or Apple Music on in the background. And you may have been playing a lot of songs from the, I'm older, 70s, 80s, 90s, songs from 10, 20 years ago, right? Good music. Not to say that current music's bad. Let's say you're playing Nirvana or something like that from the 90s. And you realize that the world's changed. Right? You're not even interested in the top 100 or the top 10 songs. Right? You're not listening to Casey Kasem debut songs. You don't even need to be current. Right? You're, you're listening to digital recordings. They don't degrade right, on services that have all the music. You're talking to your Echo or your Alexa, and you're saying, hey, play, that's the way I like it, right, whatever. And they're pulling up the songs. That's the way I like it radio edit by offering me that's some featuring Maya like on Amazon Music. Sunshine Band. Hold on one second. Alexa, stop. Echo, Stop. That's the world we live in, folks. Well, understand there's money to be made. There's money to be made on the royalty rights for all that good old music. The world's changed. The market is just figuring it out. In the old days, unless the music was classic, 
older music was undervalued in the market. Who was going to pay big money for royalties on a song that was a hit 30 years ago? But now people are listening to that. Not only that, if I bought an album, let's say I bought that KC and the Sunshine Band album back in the day, I could play it a million times and the artist gets no extra money because I've already bought the album. Well, no one's buying albums anymore. They're streaming. And understand how streaming changes the game. Every time the song streams, the artist gets a royalty. Right? Every time. So, you have companies now that are out there buying the catalogs of these old bands. You remember a few years ago, we heard that Michael Jackson couldn't be having financial problems because he bought the Beatles catalog. You remember that? That's how lucrative these catalogs are. Well, what if I told you that there's a company going around right now, well-connected company, that spent over a billion dollars buying up music catalogs of bands. And they're ingenious. They're approaching songwriters and they're buying their catalogs. So, investors in the company are able to make money, royalties, every time the song is played, legally, pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, grandma and grandpa are probably just figuring out how to talk to their Amazon device, right? They're learning how to say, hey, play Bootsy Collins, right, from back in the day. The technology and people's awareness of music catalogs of Apple Music Unlimited, excuse me, Amazon Music Unlimited, it's just coming around. Let me also say that this company has been so aggressive and so successful in buying music catalogs that Metallica recently signed with a rival group that's new in the game. In other words, the game right now is the Wild West. Companies are just starting to fight over this musical intellectual property. Well, the company that impresses me, believe it or not, is an over-the-counter stock, right? They're based in Great Britain. You can buy them in the United States over-the-counter. What that means is less liquidity, right? But understand, the stock is priced below $5. And they have bought some of the biggest catalogs in the music industry. As I've said, they've spent more than a billion dollars. The company was founded by one of Beyonce's old managers. The name of the company is Hypnosis, and it's an exotic spelling. It's H-I-P-G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Again, that's H-I-P-G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. The over-the-counter symbol is H-P-G-S-F. Again, that's H-P-G-S-F. Right? They've already signed up, for example, Bruno Mars's songwriter. They have his catalog. Right? So Uptown Funk and stuff like that, they get a cut every time it plays on a streaming device. Folks, the future's streaming. If you were at a party and you saw the hosts swapping in CDs, you would ask yourself, what's going on here? <laughs> right? You'd say, CDs? Who uses CDs anymore? Right? Understand, if the person taped stuff off Amazon Music or Apple Music, well, during the taping... To listen to Apple Music, enable the skill and link your account. <laughs> I've sent the details to your Alexa app. Again, that's the world we live in. Just, just understand that... Anything downloaded off these 
music services someone is getting paid royalties for why not have that someone be you right your friends are dazzled when good music plays on these devices mark cuban billionaire mark cuban talked about how if he were hustling today if he were trying to get started he'd be working on apps for these devices right i won't say the device or it'll start talking to me again in the background here right just to understand, you can profit from owning the intellectual property rights, right? The musical royalty rights on the content that no doubt will increase over time in the number of times that it's streamed. So a speculation I'm looking at is hypnosis, right? You can go in right now and grab royalties on some of the most popular songs of the last 40 years the stocks dirt cheap it's just starting out they've already spent over a billion dollars people in the industry know that now the price of these music catalogs is starting to go up because they're in the market competitors are starting to jump in the market right when those competitors become better defined you can hedge the play by taking a position in those competitors. The point is, this market is going to grow in value. Right? People over 30 aren't interested in the song that came out last week as much as they are in the anthem that defined their youth. Right? Some of these songs, you know, the Beatles are still popular. Some of these groups, some of these songs have spawned cultures that will continue to demand that these songs be streamed. Understand, we're in an on-demand world now. Right? The songs that are streaming on your device are the songs you want to have streamed on your device. I believe hypnosis is a speculation that I have to consider and it's one I want to be a part of at this price level. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me close by saying this. In the crypto world, I believe there is crypto dynamite out there. A uh, cryptocurrency that quite frankly is exploding and is on the verge of gapping up huge right that cryptocurrency's chain link i've mentioned it in earlier videos understand uh these smart contracts need information they need price information they need to know when certain events happen right the crypto community is growing up it now needs connections to the real world that's where chain link comes in Right, Chainlink can literally advise smart contracts as to whether or not certain criteria has been met in the outside world. Folks, that's an essential service. Chainlink seems to have the jump on everyone. It's still selling below $10 a coin. You can pick up Chainlink at places like Binance.us. Right? I think Chainlink, and I'm, I'm into Bitcoin, I'm into Dash, I'm into Bitcoin Cash. I'm just telling you that I think Chainlink is uniquely positioned, as I also believe, Cardano is uniquely positioned. Right? Let me uh, add another caveat, too. I know everyone's waiting for Ethereum 2.0. I think... Um, Vitalik Buterin's in a tough spot because the co-founder of Ethereum, Charles Hodgkinson, is the head guy at Cardano, and Cardano is doing great things. You're up huge if you took my advice on buying Cardano a few videos back. You're up huge right now, right? So Ethereum 2.0 wants people to believe that they're going to upgrade 
the network within the next few months, right? You have an outfit, Matic Network, M-A-T-I-C, that increases the scalability of the current Ethereum. They believe that Ethereum 2.0 is going to be delayed. And we're getting information in the crypto sphere that Ethereum 2.0 might not debut before 2021, right? That there are going to be some delays in the rollout. Now, given that the DeFi world right now revolves around Ethereum, right? Things like Kyber, for example, revolves around Ethereum. I believe that Matic Network, a very cheap cryptocurrency, is definitely worth a look. In other words, anything that increases the scalability of current Ethereum, which might be around longer than we expect, is worth a look. Right? I have a position in Matic Network. Um, I might increase that position if further news comes out of delays in Ethereum 2.0, right? Let me just say, too, that I believe personally in Cardano a lot more than I believe in Ethereum, right? Cardano has moved slower. It's a tortoise and hare situation. But I get the feeling that Cardano is more advanced. In any event, Cardano is selling at below 15 cents a coin right now. Right? I view that as an asymmetrical bet. Right? If Cardano, which already has a top 10 market cap in all of crypto, if Cardano delivers on the promise Right, you're looking at possibly the next operating system for crypto. Selling right now at a price that's dirt cheap. In other words, all of these um, DeFi products that are circulating around and relying upon Ethereum, many of them could peel off and could have Cardano equivalents, right? I believe Cardano is underpriced at these levels. Understand, while its market cap's in the top 10, it's still not where Ethereum is right now. Even though an argument can be made that its technology is superior to Ethereum 1.0, right? I think Cardano is definitely worth a look. In sum, I'm not buying the hype on the stock market. I believe you still need to be in sound money. I believe sound money includes Bitcoin, uh, silver, gold, right? Also, I personally believe that cryptocurrency technologically is far beyond traditional legacy finance right now. Right? People think they're styling by having a Visa or a MasterCard or by having a PayPal, Venmo, Zelle account. Right? None of them can match the capability right now of Uphold.com's products. And I believe that technological gap is going to widen. Already you're hearing that PayPal now wants to get involved in the crypto game. Right? As advanced as Cash App is versus most things, it still can't match Uphold when it comes to credit cards. And I believe what's going to happen is as the cryptocurrency offerings expand, right, as people start to realize that they can link a Chainlink or a Cosmos account to their credit card and have their wealth denominated in a cryptocurrency that's growing in value rather than a fiat currency that's decreasing in value. I think folks are going to start to switch to crypto for its greater convenience. I believe the world is going to flip here.
where consumers are going to start to realize that crypto not only offers you sounder money, but offers you a better, more convenient, easier consumer experience. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say this too. If you have an idea, an investment idea, that you want to share with the public, then I hope you comment on it in the comment section of this video. Also, if you have a different take on any of the investment ideas I've mentioned, right? Bitcoin, uh, precious metals, uh, Freeport MacMoran, uh, silver ETFs, hypnosis. Uh, if you feel there's a better play in the space, go ahead and make the case in the comment section of this video. This video, by the way, is being posted at youtube.com slash DWYER70905 for those of you hearing this on Alexa, right? And if you wanted to hear this on Alexa, the way to do so is to say, hey, Alexa, play Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on Apple Podcasts. Thanks for stopping by.